Um, went the hook of the vacuum pump up to the back end here, a little bummed at myself. You'll notice right here. So I cracked the case there. All right, folks, well, I showed you that I broke our fluorescent light tube on the other laser that we were working on. Um, so I'm gonna salvage all the pieces from that, add two other pieces of metal to it, and one glass tube. And basically, it'll be the same thing with a smaller diameter inner tube. So what I've done here, if I bring you down just to show you, is we've got one of these smaller glass tubes, which is actually one of these uh, neon sign tubes. You can see here at the end of the neon signs, maybe you can see inside of there, and maybe that side's not the best. Let me walk you down to the other. Alright, so you can see the cathode and anode material that they're using, the emitter tubes here. Uh, they even got a nice little insulator around them to keep them from touching the glass. Wire ends coming out the ends, and we're going to use both ends of that. So what I've done is carefully cut each side of this, and you want to do this inside of a glove box. So I had to throw this in the long glove box, cut the other side of it, because there's mercury inside of these. There's actually mercury, so I was able to capture a little bit of mercury from inside of there, clean it all out, wash it with a bunch of detergent agents and uh, a couple alcohols to see if, uh, make sure there wasn't any extra mercury or anything else left over in there. And what I ended up with is this nice glass tube right here. After I scrubbed all the white out of the inside of it and everything else, I've got this nice glass tube for our inner tube for our laser system. And what you see right here is that cathode material or anode material that they're using, the emitter tubes. And I've got two of those. So what I've done is cut those down and they're going to fit right inside of right there. And that's just a piece of brass. Uh, attached to our old fitting. So we have our rear mirror fitting here with the gas tube and everything else. It fit perfectly inside of this side of it and it's nice as that glass tubing with a little bit of tape fits perfectly inside of that side and we're gonna get rid of the oldie uh, the high voltage hookups that we had. We're gonna go ahead and hook these on with some JB weld right inside of this tube just like that and that'll give us our high voltage hookup right there and our emitters. That'll be a lot better than what I had originally. So this would be a, a more refined laser system in the end, hopefully working a lot better. I was kind of bummed out we get, didn't get a chance to actually use the original tube design that we were going with. Now, I used another one of the same size fluorescent light tubes. I started out gonna rebuild that laser and I decided let's go ahead and really show you how to build a laser here. If you notice what I've done, just oblong one of the sides of the holes in the back of the metal there just enough to put a plastic tube up inside of that outer glass sleeve there. So we have one plastic tube there and on this side we've got the same thing and I've just ovaled it out once again on one side just large enough to stick that tube in there. One of those tubes will point at the very bottom and like this one that'll point right at the top. That way you have your hot cycle, you know, your thermodynamic cycle going on inside of there. So let me go ahead real quick, pull the outer sleeve off of there and just show you what the inner tube looks like. Alright folks, we've been working on our laser project now for quite a while. Uh, in the end, the reason it took so long is I broke the original glass tube. I tried to rebuild it again, I broke it again. One of the things I'm going to say about these fluorescent tubes is right here where the glass meets a little metal cup that's on the end of them. Uh, the first two of them, I went to attach the compressor line here, which is kind of difficult to get on there. And I actually snapped them right at the glass ring. The second one, it actually snapped right there. I was pretty bummed out after building two of them. Uh, so what I've done here is actually, and in the end, no matter how hard you try, even on this one, you can see I had to put glue around it. Uh, for a water jacket. The second I put water in there and it pressurized it all, started leaking all the way around the rim of the metal touching the glass. Uh, it was doing that on the third one of these I built without the inner tube. I was still trying to show you the oscillator. Uh, in the end, I couldn't figure out where the vacuum leak was. Uh, used some liquid to search all the locations. Finally found out it was right there. And so I gave up on using those neon sign tubes. It's trying to actually use them as our vacuum tube for the laser itself. And like I showed you in the previous video here, a part of this one, uh, I've added the inner glass tube in there. So now we actually are going to be building a true laser. Instead of an oscillator at this moment, I'm going to have to find some different tubing for that project. You see here we have our high voltage hookups. We've got some rubber caps on those. Uh, those are actually the high voltage outputs for a neon sign. So I've actually used the emitter cones, the emitter cups that are in there as our uh, emitters for this project. You can see that down here at this side also. They've just got some wires sticking out of the end of the glass, so I've twisted on our 
high voltage terminals there. So there's one of the high voltage transformers I showed you. And I'm a little bummed because I haven't yet been able to recover the second one. There was a lot of damage in there. And I don't know if you've ever opened one of these, but what they did is they flipped the case upside down after building it and literally filled the entire thing full of a tar material uh, as an insulator and a moisture protective. Um, so I'm slowly whittling out all the tar on the other one. This one does work. It works pretty good. So we've at least got one. I was hoping for 30,000 volts at 40 milliamps. And instead we're going to get about 15,000 volts. Which is not too bad. It'll work for this project. So once again we got our emitters. We've got our tube inside of there. We've got our water inputs right here. You can see our water input going into the outer glass jacket. And here's the other one on this side is this tube right here. You can actually see the end of the tube inside the glass right there. So that's going to flood the entire glass chamber here with water. Those go into the back, like I showed you before. Out our output terminals here. All the way down and around and into this. So this, right here, you can see all the mounting holes where the uh, tubes and the wires and everything go through the container here. This is our water pump water holder container there. I've got some dirt that fell in. I had the lid open so I'm going to have to dump that out and put some new distilled water in there. Make sure you use distilled water. Uh, you can see here, here's our return line that just feeds back into it. Real quick, let me turn this on so you can see that. You can see the air bubble starting to move that direction. And there we go. So there went the uh, outline now full. Some of these air bubbles will work their ways out of the tube here. Slowly but surely. So there you go, that's our water line. Now let's go to the return line. You can see our return line feeding back in. Just one of those 12 volt submersible pumps you can get at any store for pretty cheap. Uh, going out to our feed line. So there's our water system. Let's go ahead and shut that off. Once again, you just got a little toggle switch. So that's our air compressor. That's our water pump. All right, so now we've got a water jacket basically full and just give that a moment and you can then kind of see right now, watch those bubbles actually slowly find their way to the other side. I had to prop up the other side just slightly just to get this effect. Otherwise, the bubbles were just sitting in the middle or over to one side. So you're going to want to do that at least to get it all primed and get the air bubbles out of your system. The rest of it here, we've got our vacuum compressor hooked up. Uh, we've got our mixing tube here, and I'm going to tell you what, this is not an easy thing to get to fire without helium gas. Nitrogen is one of the easiest gases that you can provide for this. CO2 is going to be the next easiest. And obviously your, uh, your helium is not going to be easy. The helium gas is going to require you going down and buying some kind of uh, helium supply from one of you. We've got one of these clamp-on needle valves hooked to that piece of copper tubing. So the gas actually goes through the tubing, fills our balloon, and out of that tube, I have a needle valve that's feeding around in a loop here to the back of our mixing reservoir. So we can actually needle valve adjust right here, our actual CO2 supply into the mixing reservoir. Uh, out of the mixing reservoir, the last piece that I didn't show you last time is we have a needle valve right here. So this will actually be our direct gas feed into the laser system. So we can adjust with this needle valve the feed into there. So there you go, that'll be one of the pieces you're definitely going to want to hook up so you can feed at the exact right ratio of the gas through the system. Alright folks, so here we go. We're going to fire up our laser tube. And right now what we're going to do is fire it up as an oscillator. Since I don't have an output coupler on there, we're not transmitting the extra 25% of the light that makes it through the output coupler as a laser beam. So we're actually going to keep that 25% inside the oscillator and it's going to get very, very bright comparative to what you see coming from a normal laser with the output coupler on there. So this will act more like a light bulb in a lot of respects than it will act like a laser since we're not actually putting out a beam at this moment. Uh, the steps I'm going to go through here to kind of show you exactly what's going on, uh, it's going to get loud once I hit the vacuum pump. So I'm going to flip on the switch back here, turn on the vacuum pump, click on the water pump back here so we can cycle the water on right now and there's no lacing taking place inside of there whatsoever. Uh, so that way you can tell and we're running that right now. I can actually kind of feel the static in the air around it and I can smell the ozone uh, from the high voltage discharge points up here underneath the caps. You can actually smell some of the ozone from that when you turn it on. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to fire it up. Hopefully you can hear me. Alright, so there's our vacuum pump. We're going to go ahead and let that run now for just a moment and build up enough vacuum in there. 
can kind of tell where I hit it because I can see a, a tube start to move a little bit. One of these tubes over here, this one right there, I can actually see it squeezing just enough. And when I see that, I know I've hit the right vacuum. All right, we're about there. Let's go over here now and turn on our high voltage. So we've now got high voltage and vacuum. Let's go over here now and turn on our, our valve. There. All right, so there we go. We've got our light beam on. We can flick it on and off over here at the switch. You can really see that inner light inside of there, our oscillation pattern. And then you can see the extra photons being given off into the water itself. The water is acting like a reflector or a capturing uh, glow emitter. So it's actually glowing the photons. You can see a little flicker in it. Means I'm not quite set up perfectly, but boy, that beam looks pretty clean in the center. So there you go.